Most of the world's data is stored in databases, so being able to create, transform, and analyze databases with precision using SQL is an essential skill for the modern analyst. That's why in this video, you'll learn to install the software, to write simple and intermediate queries, and to export your findings into other platforms like Excel or Power BI. And don't worry, you don't need to know anything about coding before this video. So let's get into it. SQL is used to interact with databases, like speaking to them basically. And for this, we need what's known as a Relational Database Management System, which is a software that allows us to store, manage, query, and retrieve data stored in a relational database. There's many different ones like PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, or MySQL, which is the most popular one and the one that we'll be downloading in this video as it's also free. Overall, there's not a very big difference between them. So let's get started downloading MySQL. You can find the link for it over here or down in the video description. When you scroll down, by default, it should already select your operating system. So it should be good with Windows for me. From here, there's two versions to download. We want the one that doesn't say web on it. So this bottom one for us, and we'll just click on download. And here, you don't need to log in or sign up. You can just click on no thanks. Just start my download. And let's wait while it loads up. We can now go ahead and open this up. And once this pop-up here shows up, we want to click on full there and click on next. Click on execute here where it says ready to install. And this should take a bit of time. So just be patient. We can then click on next here and next again. For this, you can just leave it as is and click on next. Here, select this top part and click on next again. And for your password, feel free to write whatever you want here. I'm just gonna put a simple one. Make sure you don't forget it. Click on next there, next again, next and execute. Now we can just go to finish there and next again, click on finish. And this final one is going to be next. And here, what we want to do is put the password that you typed earlier. So I'm just going to put mine, click on check, and you should get this connection secured button in green there and click on next there and execute. Now we can just press on finish there and next again and finish. Awesome. This should open up MySQL Workbench and you just want to click on this local instance, which is the one that we'll be working with, which should open up a page like this. Awesome, that's the setup process complete. And now we can go ahead and get started with the analysis. But first we need a data set to work with. And for this, you can check it out in the description below. But let's suppose we're working as analysts for Forbes and they're asking us to analyze some of the trends of billionaires. So that's what the data set is about. Now to go ahead and add it, we want to go to this button right here, create a new schema, which is basically like a database. Let's go ahead and call this something like rich list. Just gonna put it all together there and click on apply. Click on apply again and finish. Now, if we refresh this on the left hand side, you can see we have this new list, which is rich list. And within it, we wanna import a table. To do this, we can select on tables, right click and go to table data import wizard. And here's where you would add the file that I provided in the description, like I said. So mine is right here. I'm just going to insert it, click on next. And let's go ahead and call this a new table called just billionaires and click on next again. Here's a bit of a preview. We're happy with that. So we'll just click on next. This might take a while to load. Click on next there and finish. Now, if we refresh this over to the side, you can see we have this billionaires table and to go ahead and select it, we first need to select the right database. So we can just double click on that. And you can see that it's gonna turn bold. So that's how we know we have it selected. And to go ahead and find everything inside of the table to first preview it, we can type in here, something like select all, which we can do using this asterisk from the billionaires table, right? So that's the one that we want. And we'll put the semicolon to say that we're finished with this query. And we can go ahead and run it with this thunder button. So you can see it says execute the statement under the keyboard cursor, or we can use this other one, which is executing the selected portion or everything. So we're fine with that. And you can see down below what our table looks like. So we have information like their net worth, their category, their name, age, and so forth. If your SQL workbench doesn't look exactly the same, it could be due to these buttons over here. And you can see how you can collapse them or change them around depending on what you want. The first task we have from our manager is that he only wants to see the person's name and their net worth. 
So for this, you might recall we said select all, but instead we want to just select the person name, which is this part down here. And we also want to select the final worth. So we'll put a comma and final worth. And now we can just run this again. And you can see right there that we have that table sorted. Now that we understand these basics, let's suppose we want to find out all of the countries that are in this list. So first we can take a look at what we have in the whole table by putting the asterisk again and just running that. So you can see we have all of the countries down over here, but there's many repeated ones. So we need to find some kind of function that works only for unique ones. So we can go ahead and put the select the distinct countries from the billionaires table. And now we can run that. You can also hit control enter there as a shortcut. And you can see we have all of the unique list. That said, our manager wants to know the count of these. So what's the total number of unique countries we have? Well, that's where aggregate functions come in. And we can use that by putting a count up in here. And what do we want to count? Well, all the distinct countries. So we'll put those in parentheses there like so. And now we'll run that. And you can see we have a count of 39 countries. At this point, you might wonder why we're capitalizing some words. And the overall interface is not case sensitive. That said, Generally, when it's in SQL, you might capitalize everything that's SQL code, while if it's just text, you would put it in lowercase. That's how you would distinguish between the two. So we know there's 39 countries, but how many people are actually in this list? Well, for that, it's selecting the count of distinct. Instead of country, it's of people, right? And if you might recall from here, if we hover and click over it, you can see we have all of the column names, and the one we're looking for is the person name. So we can type it in here just as person name and control enter. So you can see we have roughly 500 people in this list. Continuing on with aggregate functions, it would be interesting to see what the average net worth is of this list. So for this, instead of a count, we're going to go with an average, which we type by typing AVG. And so it's going to be the average, not the distinct person name, but rather the average net worth, which is the final worth from the billionaires table. And we'll hit control enter. And you can see that I think this, th these figures are in millions. So it's an average of 14.8 billion. If you're liking this video and the teaching style, and you want to invest into learning SQL, you can consider taking our SQL for business analytics course. With our hands-on case study based approach to learning SQL, You'll go from complete beginner to confidently adding this skill on your resume and using it on the job. Our curriculum starts with the basics of databases and how to get started with SQL. From here, you are learn to create your own databases, add tables and values inside of it. Then you learn to interact with the database by writing queries from very simple select statements to more complex window functions, joins and even subqueries. Finally, once you're comfortable with SQL, we'll work on two extensive case studies designed to simulate a real world scenario where you'll be working as an analyst, both cleaning up data and extracting valuable insights based on your team's requests. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Now that we understand the basics of the select statement and aggregations, we can start to filter. For example, suppose our manager is asking us for the richest people in France. Well, for this, let's go back to select all first and hit control enter. And we want to find the country that's only equal to France, right? So select all from billionaires and we'll just hit enter here where the country is equals to and we'll put it in these quotes here, France. And now hit control enter again. So this should now be a list that's only France. That said, that's only one condition at the moment. We can add multiple conditions. Let's suppose that it's France, but it can't be in the city of Paris. So we can say under the city is not equals. And for this, we use this sign right here to in quotations there, Paris. Let's close the quotations and control enter again. So you'll see all of these billionaires here are not from Paris, but they're still French. You can see there we filtered with the AND condition. We can also filter with the OR. For example, people that are in France or in Spain. So we can switch the AND there to an OR. The country again is equals to, in quotes there, let's say Spain. 
So now we're saying where the country is equal to France or Spain. Let's go ahead and run that one. And you can see there that we get some people from France while others from Spain. Right now, we only have two options, France or Spain. We can also add an other or, but when it comes to multiple conditions, it's sometimes easier to use the in. So let's take a look at that. And for this, we can always comment this part out. Maybe we wanna reference it in the future. Just by using this sign over here, you can see that the color changes. So where the country is in, and in parentheses here, we can put all of the countries we want. Let's say one is France, comma, then let's say we also want Spain, comma, and finally we want Italy. You can see I'm putting all of those in quotations. We'll close the parenthesis and now we can just run that part. So you can see we get some people from France, some from Spain, and even some from Italy in here. We now know aggregate functions and we also know the filtering. So let's try to combine these two. For this, our manager is asking out of this list, count how many are self-made. You can see that column down over here. Because we're counting, it's going to be, let's say we put it down over here, select the count of person name. So it's a count of all of the people from the billionaires list, where under the self-made, so self-made table, if they're equal to true. So those people would be self-made basically. Let's try to run that part. And you can see here that around 310 out of roughly 500 that we had are actually self-made. Next up, our manager wants us to find the number of billionaires by industry. This is where we'll need to use the group by statement. So let's take a look at that. After all, we are grouping. But first, I'm just gonna delete this part and show the whole table so we can get a better idea. You can see down here we have industries. So we're gonna want to get the count of billionaires by industry. So we need two things. One is going to be industries, comma. Let me just delete this part so you don't get confused there. So industries and the other one is going to be the count of person name from the billionaires table. And we want to group this, right? So it's going to be group by, what are we grouping by? By all the different industries, right? And now we can just put the semicolon and run that. So you can see here we get the full breakdown, but it's not in any particular order. Let's try to add an order by. So we wanna order by the count. So by this column, right? Which is the count of the person name. And we can order it either in ascending or descending order, which would be from high to low. So let's try that. And you can see here that the industry with the highest billionaires seems to be finance and investments. That said, the count of person name isn't a very nice header. So maybe we can change the header name. For that, we first put it up here so we can just change it to an alias. So count of the person name as something like billionaire count and control enter. You can see how that's changed that header name. Finally, suppose our manager wants to cap this table at the top 10 only. For that, we can put what's known as a limit. So the very end there, I'm going to put a limit to let's say 10 people and I'm just gonna run that. Now you can see we only get a list of 10 and this is fully dynamic so I can always change to 15 and it's gonna update fairly quickly. Now that you get the idea, let's practice with another one and suppose our manager is asking for the number of billionaires by birth month. He's maybe thinking that some people born earlier in the year have a higher likelihood of becoming billionaires. So first, let's go ahead and delete all of this and we'll just put select all from billionaires and just control enter. So you can see if we scroll over to the side, we have what's known as the birth month. So that's going to be what we're going to be grouping by. And feel free to pause this video and give this one a try on your own. All right, so it's going to be to select one, the birth month, comma, and two, we're also going to select the count of the person name that's how we'll know how many to put in each group from billionaires and we want to group by the birth month. And let's also order this already. So order by birth month in descending order. Let's try run that, see what comes up. So actually maybe it makes more sense in ascending order and control enter. So you can see there that in the month of January, we actually have the highest number of billionaires 
Even better, instead of ordering by birth month, we could order by the count of person name. So let's go ahead and put that in here and control enter. And instead of ascending, let's put it in the sending order and control enter. So you can see January is the highest followed by September. Finally, let's talk about saving and exporting. And let's suppose that this is a very big query, took you a long time to make, and maybe you wanna save it. We can do that by pressing on this button. So we wanna save the script to a file and you notice here that it saves as a .sql. And if we were to save it and then open it up, it would show up exactly like this again. Similarly, suppose we want to export our results. You can see them down over here. Maybe we wanna take this table into Excel. We can just click on that export button over to the side. And you can see here that we can save it as a CSV, as well as an Excel spreadsheet if we wanted. For now, I'm just going to save it as a CSV. And let me call this billionaires and click on save. Here I am in Power BI and let's suppose I want to import all of that data. So I'm gonna go to get data and text slash CSV and I'm just going to select it, click on open there and here it is on the side and I'm just gonna load it up. Here's the data to the side so I can create some kind of a chart for example. Let's suppose I put one in here which is going to be for all of the billionaires. One's gonna be let's say on the X axis and the other on the Y. So you can see here that the month of January is definitely the dominant one for becoming a billionaire. Also, it is worth noting that there is a way to create a live connection, but maybe that's for another video. Overall, this should give you a good introduction to SQL. That said, there's obviously a lot to learn, like working with multiple tables, using joins, subqueries, window functions, and a lot more complex stuff, which you can learn in our course over here. So if you like this video, hit the like and the subscribe for more and I'll catch you in the next one.